Hey guys, and welcome to today's video. So in this one, we're going to be unboxing the GameSir X2, which is kind of a little rival to something like the Razer Kishi controller. So for all you cloud gamers and mobile gamers out there, we'll just have a look and see what this is like, give you our first impressions of it, and kind of give a little bit of a comparison to this. By the way, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do, because we're going to have a comparison of something like the GameSir, the Razer Kishi, and we're also going to try and get hold of the Backbone One controller and just decide which one's best for mobile gaming and cloud gaming. So let's get on with it, shall we? So this thing is, I guess, a slightly more budget version than something like the Kishi. It retails for between about 60 to 70 pounds, depending where you go. And it comes in this lovely beaten up and crunched box. This is, uh, <laughs> This is taking some hammer. Now it does look a little bit more solid from kind of first impressions and what I've seen online than something like the Razer Kishi. And in our review of this, I said that it's a really great and convenient controller that's easily tucked away. Just it's always felt a little bit flimsy, especially on that left side. So I'll be interested to see what a difference this makes. So first let's pop it open. And kind of pop this here. Be interested to see what this is like. Oh comes in this little carrying case, which feels pretty robust. It seems to be all the rage that a lot of the stuff that kind of comes over from China, like our retro games consoles and handhelds that we've used, a lot of accessories come in this sort of like black fabric material box and this kind of red trim around the side. And that must be just some kind of electronic standard. Let's see what we'll get in here. So comes in here, I'm assuming maybe some kind of cable? Nope, oh, this little thing. Tells you more about games, sir. Thank you for purchasing, extend your warranty by six months and all of that. Um, instructions and some stickers as well. So if you want to game sir your room, then you can do. If you haven't heard of game sir, they've been a brand that's been around for quite some time. They always make these I guess these types of accessories, I've seen a lot of games controllers from them. I have used a few games controllers from them in the past and they've always been all right. So I'm intrigued to see what this is gonna be like. Anything else in here? So it's kind of held down by this elastic strap, which I've got to say, obviously it's meant to secure it in there and uh, definitely, I don't know if I'd want to use that all the time because I'm getting caught like with the joystick and everything. So that's annoying. Let's pop that aside. Has quite a strong smell to it straight away. Now. I will say it's definitely, I guess, bigger. It's not as compact as something like the Kishi. So if I put them kind of like that underneath the camera. See, this folds up, which is a really nice little touch and it goes real slim because of that. However, this doesn't. It's still, you know, you can stretch it out, which is pretty good, but it doesn't fold up to something like this. However, definitely more solid straight away out of the box. You can tell it's because we've got this sort of plastic bit along here. It's not going to fold over like it does on the Kishi. Now let's have a quick look. We've got these sort of rubber grips on the back. It's quite nice actually. I do like that. Lightning cable down here as well. So if you want to use your pass through charging, you can be able to do that. You've got your lightning cable just here. That feels relatively flimsy it's got quite a lot of move but i don't necessarily think that's a cheapness thing i think that's oh yeah so look it angles up you'll probably see that on the camera which i suppose is quite a nice touch up where you're not going to have to worry about that snapping off or damaging your iphone which is always a good thing um buttons d-pad feels okay it's got a decent little click there it doesn't feel overly consistent the down button feels a little bit more mushy than the others Analog sticks are really small. Like they feel really small. They're not bad, but they almost feel harsh on the fingers because they're quite small. I mean, they've got a good click, good range of movement. They both feel pretty equal there, but yeah, they feel really small. And because they're like inverse, they're not indented like on something like the Kishi or some other controllers that I've used. Yeah, they, they feel kind of weird. I guess it's down to a preference thing, really. Home button, very mushy. And I guess you like your select buttons feel all right, again, pretty mushy. A, X, Y, and B, feel okay. I've got to say one thing, I don't know if it, these protrude more than I'm used to, but actually it feels like it's getting in the way. So of your A, X, Y, and B, that right analog stick, it's kind of hitting the bottom of my thumb there. So it's not the most comfortable way to play. Um, shoulder buttons, 
relatively loud. So if you're playing this on a bus or something like that, or public transport, just bear in mind you might get thrown off by <laughs> your fellow passengers. Um, triggers are the same as well. They feel comfortable enough, they're pretty easy to get to. Decent enough click, you can't really feel it too much, there's more impact on your fingers than anything else there. In comparison to these, I've got to say the Kishi, the shoulder buttons on the Kishi feel a lot better. Um, triggers feel alright on the Kishi, but I've got to say there's, it's more satisfying to use this, but you would expect that it's more of a premium product. And also they're not really click mad. So apart from that, it's pretty much what I'd expect. I've got this sort of extending bit, so you can use multiple types of iPhones. First thing I'm going to try is whether or not you can use it with a case. That's something that you can't really do on the Razer Kishi unless you took out all the bits, and even then it's, it's not the easiest thing. It's not something that I'm bothered about, but I know a lot of people have talked about it in the comments. So, um, maybe, let's have a look. It just seems... As though my case is maybe a little bit too thick at the bottom. So let's jump into Stadia and see whether or not that is detecting it with the case on. If it does, I guess it makes it a little bit more convenient than something like the Kishu because then you don't have to pop your phone out every time and all that. So, um, arc. I don't know why it bothers me, but the um, lightning connector is on the left hand side as it faces you. I, I'm just more used to having it on the other side. I don't know why it shouldn't bother me at all, but it kind of does. Right, okay, so no, it doesn't detect my um, phone in a case. Bear in mind, however, that if your case is slim enough, that's not going to be too bad. Okay, and there's an example of that in action, actually. As I went to take it out, it does slide up, so you don't have to worry about that snapping off, which I guess that's a good thing. Right, we'll pop it out of the case, and we'll just have a bit of gameplay just to see what this is like. Here we go, so we will load up some Elder Scrolls Online, see how that performs. Whilst that's loading, I've got to say, I really like the feel of this actually. It doesn't feel too dissimilar to that, so when that's extended, it's going to be actually a little bit longer because of the way it clamps in around the phone. So, this is all. This was quite a comfortable size, but it was always the left-hand side that bothered me. This feels solid, so th there's no moving, you know, it's, it's not flexing or bending or anything like that. It just feels good in the hand. I guess once you're holding it, that right thumbstick doesn't feel too bad. It's not really in the way that much, but it's definitely just, I don't know if it's a little bit taller or it's the positioning or something. It would be nicer if it was a little bit more offset to the left, whereas it's pretty much bang on in line with the A, X, Y, and B. So it does kind of get in the way, but you can get used to it. It feels good. It's not adding too much weight, which is another good thing. It's not overly heavy. It is a bit heavier than something like the Razer Kishu. So again, bear that in mind if that's going to bother you. Um, but here we go. Let's see how this works. Okay, so one thing I have just noticed, so why is that still loading, um, is that on the Razer Kishi, he had these sort of cutouts here in these grooves, and that's because the speakers fired down into that and then it forced it out to the front. With this, I was just looking and thinking, actually, that must be getting blocked. But one thing that I thought was that it just wasn't pushing into the lightning connector all the way. It was just maybe the lightning connector was a little bit too long. But I think that's actually a design thing. So it's slightly moved away from that edge there. And that's because you've got your speakers. So otherwise you'd be pressing against this rubber and you wouldn't really get any sound out of it. It'd be getting blocked. So I'm assuming that it's not just a flaw with this, that that's actually part of the design, which is, I guess is relatively handy. How much does it affect the volume? Oh God. Okay. <laughs> Volume is pretty much unaffected, that's still pretty loud. Now let's kind of pop around and get an idea of how this performs. So straight away, there's no sort of lag, there's no input lag or anything like that. If I'm kind of moving, using my thumbsticks, they're responsive, everything feels good. It feels as good as the Razer does, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, here we go, get my weapons out. And that's responding as I would expect it to as well. So, you know, first impressions are really positive. These thumbsticks do still feel odd. Obviously, I haven't really used it that much, so there's a lot more to get used to, but I don't know what it is. I just think they're a little bit too small uh, in comparison to other thumbsticks I've used, and just the design of them feels a little bit uncomfortable. I'll probably get used to it, and I'll wear in over some time, but 
yeah, it's just a bit of an odd thing. However, this feels responsive. It looks pretty good. I'm not entirely sure how clean it will stay with this white design, but I guess only time will tell. And all the buttons feel good. They're decent, they're responsive, a little bit mushy in some of the areas, and see, that might drive people mad as well, especially if you are using this out and about. So just bear that in mind. You might get thrown off public transport. But all in all, as a budget alternative to something like the Razer Kishi, this seems to be a pretty decent alternative, so worthwhile checking out. We will have our full review of this at some point over the next coming weeks. I just wanna really give it a good test to make sure that it lives up to my standards and that we can actually recommend it. And if not, we'll let you know why we can't. And also as well, like we said at the beginning, make sure we subscribe because we will be having a comparison of this versus something like the Razer Kishi and also the Backbone One controller as well. So we can give you the best idea of what controller we think is best for cloud gaming. So that should be a pretty interesting video. If you've got any questions about the game Sir X2, throw them down in the comments below and we'll do our best to answer those. And in the meantime, if you've got any other comments, throw them down there as well. If you haven't already, hit that like and subscribe button because it just helps the channel to grow and we'll be back in the future with some more awesome content. Bye.